call the October 4th Select Board meeting to order. Uh, we've got Flo Smith, C. David Sawyer, Justin, myself, Justin, and uh, Vince, any additions or changes to the agenda? Oh, yes. Three, there's three additions. Mm -hmm. We have a request for a letter from the, from the Select Board for Mrs. Lassard on uh, the Junction Road with regards to a permit that the uh, Montpelier uh, treatment plant has applied for. Uh, it, it, she wants a, a letter regarding the air quality issue that she's having because of the current issues they've had this summer with, yeah. with air quality. She's already talked to a gentleman uh, responsible for air quality with the state, right. and he has asked her for... We'll that okay. Uh, what else do we have? Okay. Got it. <laughs> We've got the... Uh, Appointment letter in your packets for Mr. Warnick for representation to the Central Mart Re Regional Planning Commission and the Transportation Advisory Board. Okay. Uh, I have talked to him. He has volunteered his services to the town for that, again, to continue that. And the May 17th minutes um, are Excellent. also added to the agenda. Well, we don't need to add those if nobody else shows up because I was not there for that. Okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> That's been the issue. Um, all right, any public comment? All right, hearing none, uh, fire, de fire department survey report presentation. So we got Keith, Joe, Janet's here as just moral support, she said. So. Innocent bystander. <laughs> Innocent bystander. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> really? <laughs> all right, so the. Um, Fire Department, upon request from a discussion in the, I guess, 2020 town meeting, um, we did a study about the possibility of merging the organizational structure of the fire department with the town government, basically becoming a town department instead of the independent corporation that we are nowadays. Uh, we spent quite a lot of time and looked at um, pros and cons from our standpoint. We also spent a significant amount of time looking at how can this department better serve the community. And that's a lot that came out of it. Um, <clears throat> so we identified in through this basically four goals we would like to see the department uh, hit. Um, maintaining or, or improving our current level of service, decreasing our response time, keeping the costs to the residents reasonable, and um, recruiting, retaining more responders, high quality responders who can respond at all times of the day. Um, one of the things that the department staffing is, is a big portion. If you notice a little bit into it, about 30 years, about 15 years ago, we had twice the number of responders that we do now. And um, that's a trend that's not just in Berlin. That's really a national trend for volunteer organizations, fire services, even locally with like Barry City, for example, they used to have a lot more what they call call force, which is like part-timers that they can call as necessary. They're down on those even, you know. Um, they have to rely on their full-timers to, to cover additional calls more and more often, which increases their operating costs too. Um, we looked at when is our highest demand during the day. <clears throat> Our highest demand during the day turns out to be basically during the work hours from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. That's when we see the most calls. And that also is when our current responders were also working, so we have the least number of responders available. Um, another thing we looked at is how is our response time compared to um, basically a national standard called NFPA. Um, they would like to see volunteer rural fire departments 
get to scene in, in 14 minutes at 80% of the time. And we only achieve that 45% of the time. We achieve 80% of the time at 21 minutes, which means we have long response times at all times of the day. Um, and then another thing we did during this study is we sent a survey out to the town residents to see what their satisfaction with the current fire department is, if they, how they think the town's growth versus our model is working, and a few other questions. A couple of the big, couple of the big top takeaways was. And see, but we had about a hundred respondents, Joe. A little over. Yeah, we l slightly over a hundred residents responded to this. So, um, their top values actually was response time, our training level, and quality of equipment. Um, one of the things to note is that the tax burden to the residents was quite low. Only five percent of the respondents was their top concern. Another question was, do you think the fire department can keep up with the projected town growth, the new town center, so on and so forth? As you can see, two thirds of the residents didn't think we could keep up. Um, so in that, we're, we basically <coughs> looked at, um, how can we improve this? One of the things really is changing our operations, um, whether we merge or we don't merge. One of the things is we still want to keep the cost low to the residents, but we realize that we have slow response times, not as many re responders as we used to. So we're looking at how we can staff the department with two responders during the work week. And how is that going to work? Um, there, there's quite a few different difficulties with that, you know, the financial being the, the biggest thing and uh, benefits and so on and so forth. That, you know, how can that happen? The other thing that would, or other things that would be an advantage to staffing is it would decrease our response times, especially during that, during the um, work day. We would get a truck there on scene a lot faster. We would have the daytime crew basically do a lot of the housekeeping stuff a fire department has to do truck maintenance, building maintenance, so on and so forth, it would increase the time that our volunteers have available to train. So instead of training once a month on Tuesday, we can train two or three times a month on Tuesdays if we have staffing to cover a lot of the, um, the housekeeping stuff, essentially. Um, and how that works, we think we could do it as an independent corporation, but we also recognize that the town has a lot more power to support a daytime paid staff than we do. Um, there's the financial st stability is another issue in that, in that um, as you guys know, our budget is approved annually for one year at town meeting day. And if someone is going to go full time with us, they'll have once a year, they'll be like, am I going to have a job next year? You know, um, if we were merged, that wouldn't be a problem. So that's something that we also recognize right there. Um, but you know, our bottom line is to improve the service to the town and keep the operation reasonable, you know, the cost reasonable. So, do you have anything else, Joe? Um, I think uh, 
I think is putting in, you know, somebody full time at that department. I think uh, is is something that we're going to eventually have to do. Um, I think with our current staffing, um, we could do something of, of basically signing up for shifts. And you might find individuals coming in from outside departments who have already been, you know, who are qualified. Um, much like, you know, Barrytown EMS, they have people that come in from, you know, Waterbury or Northfield or whatnot, they share personnel. I could see something like that happening too. Um, I don't know if the model that we would be looking for would be um, just the, the merger with the town. I think that's the easy way out um, administratively on my side if I was looking at what I do. Um, I think that the bottom line is you're going to have to pay somebody to staff that. And I think um, this next upcoming budget, I'm going to work with those numbers and see what that might look like and see what we can do. What we don't have control over is the daytime coverage. We have a small number of people that can actually make those calls. But what we do have control over, and this has to be a buy-in from our whole department, are weekends and weeknights. Okay? So we could put people in there for a period of time and pay them a stipend of some sort. What is that going to look like? I don't know. Um, it will be different than our regular budget that we present to the town. Because I think, um, I was told if I, if I incorporate that into the budget, there's a good chance it'll get voted down. And I was thinking, wow, what would I do with all that time? <laughs> um, I, I think it's something we're going to have to play with. And <coughs> before we, we go much further with it, I think presenting that to the select board at a later time would be, you know, appropriate for more discussion. Okay. So, yeah, no, thank you. I know you guys put a lot of time and we're very dedicated to the town, so I appreciate that. And you guys, very thankful for you. I had a couple of quick questions when it comes to the survey. They, they may have a couple as well. Um, but what I wanted to see was um, you know, you said that with the uh, the top values, you know, we're talking about response times, training levels. When we say top values, I mean, we can look at this, and, and this doesn't go drill down into the survey data that I was curious about that I'd like to see. Yeah. Um, some more specific survey data, I think, would be interesting to look at. I mean, when I look at this and I see the top values of survey respondents, uh, one is, you know, response times. Well, is, what is that saying to me? What it, like, for example, when I look at 27.2% as the top value, what, what exactly... Is that that 27.2% thought that was the most important thing, that they were satisfied with it, that they thought our response, like where they where they thought the level of service was? What is that data saying? And maybe us seeing the survey too. And I was wondering if additional surveys are trickling in, because I was thinking 100 responses is low mm -hmm. for the town. So um, there must have been a time period for people to respond, we, and I'm thinking we should get a larger response. We did do a cutoff on the time period for it. Uh, we got, of course, you know, a lot of them initially, and then I don't remember how long the hundred was. I think it was like three or four weeks for the hundred. Um, it was sent out front porch forum. Did his electronic surveys? What it was? Mm -hmm. um, can we get a copy? We of can survey? give you a copy of the the full set of questions. We. We included into this what we thought was the most important couple of pieces of information from the survey. Well, I know we that. can give you a a full copy of, of the responses on all the questions. The raw, the raw data would be good, just yeah. because I mean, I know from just doing studies and surveys and things like that, we can, you can pull bits and pieces, and I'm not saying that you did or anything, but it's just good to have it all and look at it from a couple of different perspectives. Oftentimes. Fair um, the other quick question I had, and I'll let Dave um, get into that, is the training level was the other piece of it that was on here that was that was huge. Um, and I know that you, you you mentioned that you're you're doing you can do training more than one Tuesday mm -hmm. if you had staff over there 
create a higher, what are, do you have training programs in place? We, we I currently, think the biggest, I think the biggest thing with the, 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 the fire department right now is the, there's a lot, a little bit of unknown from the, the municipal <coughs> perspective. So from a board standpoint, um, from a, you know, safety standpoint for the residents, um, from even zoning perspective, right? Like when we're looking at our zoning and, and new properties and new buildings in town, um, some of the things that we run into is we really, there's, there's almost a lack of communication or it's not, not a lack of communication, that's not the right terminology, but there's, there's a variable or an unknown there because you know, what is the training, where's the fire department at, what's their view, um, and, and it's siloed and it's a lot like a lot of our other departments here in the town that we're trying to work on pulling together. So, you know, I don't know what your training programs are, but um, do you feel they're sufficient now? Do you feel like there's room for improvement? You know, things like that. Could you get, you know, one of the things on here is like, would you be able to get that support? This, this doesn't really show me where it's uh, showing like any, maybe I'm wrong and just jumping to conclusions, but I don't see where this report shows. Uh, it shows that you need to make some changes and, and, mm -hmm. and, and municipal or not municipal, I can see that. Right, and, and that's good. That's actually, I mean, that's probably the number one reason to do something like this is to recognize areas of improvement. But, but what was the department's consensus? Was it, did it make sense to be municipal or not, number one? And if not, why? Why was it a disadvantage to the town? And why was it an advantage to the town? Regardless, you know, did you do this report in a way where it was looking at it strictly not from the fire department standpoint, but from a town's perspective on whether or not it was advantageous to the town for the fire department to become municipal. So let me address the, the training part first. So go back to the other is um, there's a a national training standard, a few different levels called firefighter one, firefighter two that the state of Vermont puts on. They are. What are the numbers now, Janet? 160 for Fire 1? 230. 230 for Fire 1, and Fire 2 is like an additional 100 or so. Um, they're the same training standards that the full-time departments use. We have about three-quarters of our firefighters trained to the Firefighter 1 or Firefighter 2 level. The training that we do in-house is, uh, really is really maintenance training. Um, to to retain your certifications, you have to do a certain amount of continuing ed essentially a year. And that's what we do through our, our one training at a month. <clears throat> there is a, an insurance ISO has how many hours they would like to see volunteer firefighters train a month. And we are not quite to that level. If we had another training a month, we would be up to that level. Um, so does that impact taxpayers and their fire insurance in the municipality? It's a small point in a large pool with so a lot yes. of other stuff, but it may have an impact, yes. So I guess my question, well, you hold on. I just want to follow up because we had the additional one. Uh, I want to know about the pros and cons from the standpoint and perspective. <coughs> Because one of the things you said when we opened this up is that this was a, you did a pros and cons from a fire department yep. standpoint on yep. this. And I was wondering if you did it from what you would consider a municipal standpoint to whether or not you, you came up with a conclusion that was for the taxpayers um, or whether it was from a fire department standpoint. I mean, I know it was probably a combination of the two. So I'm not trying to like say it has to yeah. be one or the other, but I'm also, I'm also wondering, um, wondering if, if, if it's something that we need to take a look at because it, it maybe was leaning more towards a different perspective than what the, the town is looking for. What we wanted was a, we want is a report, we want an opinion on, you know, was it, is it better or worse for the town, financially, fire protection, all of that to be municipal or not? Okay. And so did you, did you do that or was it from a fire department standpoint? That's what I'm asked. I'm asked. I'm going to say that was slightly mixed. I'm going to say the department is, is um, in agreement that the current model is not working. Okay. Okay. And what would that be? Um, 
I, I would say three years ago, they wouldn't even talk about be, being municipal. I'm going to tell you today is a very different story. It's a very di different atmosphere over there. Um, I think what, what really drags um, the members down right now is, um, you know, a lot of the administrative or maintenance end of it. Um, you get in the weeds a little bit, I can see that. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they want to train. You know, they want to go on calls or whatnot when available. Yes, they do. Um, there was no clear, concise recommendation from the department of one way or the other. There, however, is not resistance like I thought there would have been. Like Joe said, three years ago, there would have been a lot of different answers. So, so I get that there's, um, I, I feel like there's this internal piece that we're talking about, which is resistance from the, the board because of the way it's currently structured, especially. Forget about that. Mm -hmm. What I'm asking is, is it the town better protected as a municipal department or as the volunteer department? That's, I mean, I think that's some of the information that we wanted. You see where I'm going with that? Um, I, I, I think that it's really good that we recognize this and that we, we do this and because this, is, this has been probably, you know, you see your strengths and you see your weaknesses, right? Like you always do. You see where, you can, where you're good, where you easily improve tremendously with minimal effort in areas where you need to maybe put more effort in. Um, but but I, think, I think regardless of whether the opinion of the, the fire department or the boards over there and the membership and what they want and what they see mm -hmm. as important to them. I mean, that obviously plays a factor in whether or not things could happen in a certain way, but that doesn't change whether or not it's better for the town and better for the fire protection, better for, for the municipality as a whole, based on your, not your recommendation, but based on the data that you give to us, mm -hmm. you know, honest data, truthful, you know, and I mean, it's hard to get it in that perspective, probably be, because you got, it's different. It can be. I think it's clear by looking at the data that we have here that if we have a staff department, we would be able to provide faster, better fire protection. Okay. And what is our cost per capita with the, uh, the fire department coverage now? I do not know that answer. The last data that I had was that between ambulance and fire protection, we were about $170 per person. And that's okay. roughly the same currently. So if we're talking additional expenses associated with this, I mean, currently that's the same as what Barry City pays for their per capita coverage. And that includes the ambulance. So you know, once you start going above that, is that, is there a model, a different model that we need to start looking at? Um, you know, because I think, I believe right now, we're at about $100 with the fire, is it 100 with the fire department and 70 with the ambulance, I think is what it was, or something. I don't, I may be inaccurate with that, but it was really yeah, close for the same. Um, so that information and that data is something that the town would have to consider moving forward as well. All right, David, I'm done, sorry. No, I... Uh, <laughs> You answered some of the things anyways, I mean, you said some of the things I wanted to say, but I'm looking at this top value thing, and, and, and the way I'm reading this is, is out, of, out of 100 of the town's residents, the most important thing to them was, was the response time and then the level of training that the individuals have that are showing up mm -hmm. on site. Being that I've sat over there and been on some of the board meetings and stuff and actually stopped on a couple of times at training meetings, I can see where it'd be advantageous to you guys to have somebody in the staff department during the day to do this housekeeping and maintenance, truck maintenance and stuff like that to be able to provide more training during the training night. So I, I understand your struggles. You know, you have volunteers showing up and you're having to look at SCBA hydro dates and, and, and you know, oil on the truck and everything like that where you're not able to do the training that you want to do because this other stuff kind of, I'm not going to say it's more important, but it has to be done to maintain the equipment, mm -hmm. a level of standard that you need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to maintain the readiness, absolutely. Exactly. So. so the call volume by hour data that's in here, mm -hmm. 
Let's look at that for a minute, just so you can understand it a little better. Uh, to me, it looks like, maybe, has there been a steady decline for the most part? Uh, a trend where there's less calls per hour by volume in here as the years progress? I mean, 2020. I printed mine up black and white, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, well. Um, save some ink, though. Yeah, 2020 appears to be flat. 2020 yeah. was an oddball year because of COVID, though. It's it, the. Um, we were down on all calls 2020 and COVID by 40%. And that was actually common among the entire fire service. Uh, everybody that I've talked to, numbers that I've seen is there was just not as many fire calls in 2020. I mean, so it, that's- It looks like 20, you know, 2019 was significantly lower. Right. Well. The other four, well, the other four years, 2017, one, two, three, the other five years are really, I think, more telling to look at than 2020. Okay. So, but, um, that being said, 17, 18, and 19 are lower than 15 and 16. So, is it trending down or? Yeah. And we have had, we're having fire calls trending down slightly, but EMS calls are trending up. So how many EMS calls does the fire department do? So we respond to 500 to 550 calls a year to include the fast squad call tones and the, the um, most recent years it was about 200 on fire call and the 3 to 350 for fast squad. How many fast, you went on 300 fast squad calls? Or we were towing to 300 how, fast squad calls. And how many fast squad calls, if there was 300, how many of those did you go to? I don't have that answer. Joe, do you have that? Roughly? Um, I mean, it doesn't need the, to be exact, but I'm just kind of <laughs> curious. Not for the years of which you're looking at. Okay. So... This fast squad, is that during the day? Is that evening? What is that? All the time? 24-7. Okay. Hmm. Is there any data that shows what, what these majority, because you, you, you know, we're looking at 8 to 4 p.m., which is the majority of the calls. Do we mm -hmm. have any data showing what what the majority of those calls are? What, what, what types of calls they are? 40, the, our two most common calls are alarm activations for the alarm systems in town and car accidents are our two most common calls. The structure fires slash fire calls, the, the 100 series calls, there's typically less than 12 to 15 in a year. So, so those are our two most common calls. The, the actual numbers in those years, I don't know what the actual numbers are, but that's the trend. Um, and those two right there make up about 60, 70% of our calls. Actually. So I remember from the short time I was on the board, the, the dispatch is a big expense, right? Yes. Significant expense. Um, now, and, I, and from what I recall, I don't know, like even, uh, explain this to me so that I understand these, these guys well again as well. The, the fast squad was, the, the, the fast squad call volume that you have is significant. I mean, what if that 300 tones or calls for fast squad, is, is that adds up to a fairly significant number, right? Like a definitely a bigger budget item for you? Um, you mean between for the dispatching? Yes, just mm -hmm. the dispatching all. Okay, the those this, numbers are combined when they give us the, the right, invoice, just, of course. Just, yeah, but, but and it's roughly how much per call? We came up with that number. About a hundred dollars a tone. Right, so it's just about three thousand dollars for the fast squad tones in a year. Is that what you gave us the number of three hundred? Is that how many fast squad? So you get three hundred fast, fast squads. So there's three. Oh, no, 30,000. Yes. 
you're yeah. looking at a dispatch uh, fee line item somewhere around fifty three thousand a year. Yeah, so thirty thousand. And when Fast Squad gets when there's a fire call, what explain the difference between? I mean, if there's a Fast Squad call, is there also a fire tone? Or is there a fire tone and then a fast squad tone? Not necessarily. It depends on the type of call. Uh, if it's just purely a medical call, like a heart attack or stroke, it's only a fast squad call. If it's a car accident, it's typically both. Okay. So what you know, some of my questions would be, uh, from what I remember over there, there was some some times when maybe maybe a lot of those fast squad calls might unresponded to. True. Very true, right? Um, so I see where, you know, we did a lot of work last year with the budget, I think, mm -hmm. and did some, like really tuned it up, and it was really impressive. And I think it's it's great for the fire department because we didn't cut anything out. We actually I think added value. So I think some of that goes. I mean, if 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 we're looking at these models, and we're looking at maintaining, you know, growth with the town. And maintaining, if, if you want town support on any level, even if you know uh, not on any level, but from from this pers my perspective at least, there's 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 expenses in there that are impacting the taxpayers that maybe we could be money spent. I don't know. Is it money that could be spent in an administrative role to help handle some of this, where it would be you know better for the town overall? You know, out of those fast squad calls that we went to that we did respond to, were we the first on scene? Be curious about that. You know, there's a not, lot. Of, not typically. It's a minority of the time when we're first on scene. Right. So at, at so. what point in time do you go, okay, well, the town would be better served this way and we could provide that, that different level of service. And I get it. You can't put somebody's life out there, you know, and there's a risk factor involved and, and you want to make sure that everyone's as safe as possible. But, but but that data would be interesting um, because that's that's I do remember that piece of it and if, if we're going to start talking about it a, a more a closer partnership in mm -hmm. any way mm -hmm. whether it's municipal non-municipal we need to build a partnership if we're going I, I strongly agree with this isn't derogatory in any way but I the 67 and a half percent that's on here that wonder if the fire department can keep up with the growth of the town. Yep. I didn't do the survey honestly because I knew a lot of the answers and <laughs> I know what I thought. I, I, but I would definitely fall into that category the way it's currently being not it's not being run in a bad way, but just the way it's currently the current model is. Yep. The current model is not sustainable with the growth of the town. And that's that's really a big concern for me for this town in general right now. Um, and along the same line, I'm thinking in terms of just what Justin said in terms of a partnership per se, whether it's municipal or not. Okay. Um, just looking at marketing and adding additional staff and bringing on additional people to assist in every way, shape, or form, mm -hmm. and also training. You know, and how that would affect the budget. I mean, you obviously need more people. Everyone who's there is doing a fabulous job, but more would be better. And at the same time, that means additional training, additional cost, time, etc. The, the, there would be additional cost and equipment. Mm -hmm. Additional training, not necessarily per se, because believe it or not, the uh, our firefighter one and firefighter two, we don't pay for. Um, our firefighter one, firefighter two courses are run through the uh, state of Vermont, the, the, and they provide them free to the fire department. In Vermont. Wonderful. So, That's good to know. EMS, however, we do pay for, for mm -hmm. months, but, but not, but not the fire one, fire two, and then our our continuing ed training that we do is. Financially, it's very new mm -hmm. um, because you know we're talking. All right, we're going to go out and run the trucks for uh, uh, hose drills or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's cost of running the truck, and that's it. Mm -hmm. um, so, the whole board would have to the, discuss it, but I'm thinking in terms of a partnership because obviously the town is expanding. Yes, and I can see where additional needs will be there. Yeah. And if we can partner in a way that can help you in that regard, um, 
mm -hmm. I think marketing would be huge to bring on additional okay. help. You know, like like we were saying before, it's the the model of how can we get the call time down, how can we get better coverage during the day. Pretty much the conclusion at pretty much the conclusion at that point of having a staff at least during the day. That's a major expense, of course, for you know, for payroll expense. How can that be solved? Um, is there a possibility that the town could have those employees, but we would still be a, a separate department? I don't know, but that's maybe a possibility. Um, there's a lot of different models out there mm -hmm. for how personnel are paid for. Um, there's also the SACRE grant that Federal puts out, which you can't guarantee you're going to get that because it's a grant. You know? True. Um, but they're typically a three-year funding right there that can definitely help out. And why wouldn't we apply for that if we're doing it? Last year's SACRE grant, their, their lowest priority was new firefighters. Their highest priority was preventing firefighters, from, current firefighters from being laid off, you know, full-timers. So it would be a more difficult sell to the feds for a safer grant, but it's not something we can ignore, of course. Mm -hmm. you know. The problem with that grant is you have to have a funding mechanism to keep that maintained after the three year window. You so do. Based on your current model, that wouldn't be a grant that you would be eligible for, would be my assumption. Which is something I think that we should discuss. So, so in your opinion, this eight to four, what do you figure? You'd have to staff. How many individuals would you have to staff to be effective from that eight to four period? Do you have anything? We were thoughts on that? we were figuring two. Okay. And you'd still be relying on the volunteers to, to mm -hmm. also arrive at a later time, mm -hmm. but uh, two wouldn't be that different from Montpelier. Um, and I think uh, Barry runs with three. I think that's what it is. So are you done with your the, these discussions uh, at the board level in the fire department? Are you guys done with get, trying to ga gather this data and make a determination, or is this still an ongoing? meeting or discussion or subcommittee? I'm going to say this is like going to be uh, ongoing for a bit longer. Well, just just with the questions of which you would ask tonight. Mm -hmm. okay. I would think that, you uh, you know, I would like to see from the fire department's perspective, because I think the board, the board will also work on from the board perspective. Because we may obviously look at things from different, ang <laughs> different angles. Mm -hmm. uh, regardless of your structure, regardless of any of any opinions, history, all of that, I, I would I would really like to see a black and white answer of whether or not it makes sense. Why why it would make sense to be municipal from for the town, period, right? From your perspective, and why it would in in like a, almost a, a just very clear. From a fire department standpoint, if it was municipal, we could do this, 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 this. There's the drawbacks if it's municipal. We can't do this, 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 this. If it stays at the same organization it is, but we get put the staff on that we say we need in order to get these response times or get the level of coverage that we desire there. If it's the way it says, it, it, it does this, 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 and this, which we couldn't do if we were municipal. You know, like, I'm all pros and cons. Like, not a... Which might be really difficult with your structure, I, and I get it. Not to cut you off, but I think everybody's in agreement, even sitting in the meetings, that we can't, they can't continue to go down the road of going at the, at, in the direction that it's headed because it's not going to work. Well, I mean, that's why, that's why we're in, in this discussion, is to try to figure out how to come to some place. But, but yeah. what's still, what we've made clear is that the current structure and model isn't isn't going to maintain and keep up with what the fire department feels are the goals for the fire department, for the town. 
but we don't know whether or not there needs to be that tran a transition to municipal or not. Well, I think too, it would be fair to the, to the department is we have to, as our board, has to give them what it is we want to see and how to get there and not just say, hey, come up with a... I, oh, I, compl <laughs> I, completely, just, I completely agree. Yeah. And that's why I'm saying I'd like to see that from them because that'll trigger a lot of the questions for us. Correct. That's, the, that's your specialty. That's your area. I mean, I don't know anything about fire safety. I'm not going to lie. Like, I know a little team of that. Um, but what, what were you going to say, Joe? Well, exactly uh, that. For us to come to you with a proposal, I think... I, I think uh, I think the fire department needs to know what uh, what is the expectations of the town and select board. So I think, and I, I agree, I think that I'm assuming, and, and this is wrong because you shouldn't assume, but I'm assuming that maybe the, the residents that are, the, you, I mean everybody, well, even, even, even if you're not a resident, you can see the growth that's here in town. You can you understand a little bit about what's going on in the community. Um, I, I think that, you know, obviously you've worked with our zoning department. You know how those interactions work when, when someone comes in and does a building application or, and what they ask. You know what they give you. Um, and I, I would, what I guess, I'm, we don't know what, we, what we're missing because we're trying to figure out what, what absolutely is provided. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so for us to say, well, this is what we need, we, we want... Okay, well, it's pretty simple. We want to follow an FPA standard response times, and we, 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 we want that. We want to know we want to know that we're on par with every other community department. We want to know that we're on par with the same level of professionalism as Montpelier, Barry, right? Absolutely. So, well, we don't know what that is. You guys do, though, right? I mean, you guys know what, what Barry does. You know what Montpelier does. I don't. So... When you want to know what we want out of you, we want that level of protection at, at about that same price per capita. <laughs> so I think that by you guys bringing that information and that data back to us and telling us whether or not you can do it in your current structure or whether or not you would need complete municipal support, whether it needs to be municipal or not, and I, and I don't know that, that either one is, I don't know what the answer is. I don't. I don't have an agenda either way. Uh, if, if it's better protection for our community and better for the fire department to keep the structure that it is, that's great. But if it's if it's not, well then 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 I'd like to know that too. But I'd like to know that from the fire department's perspective, and I think that's a fair question to ask at this point in time. So, just so I understand, mm -hmm. you anyway, if not the select board, is looking for the same level of protection as very or more player. Is that what you're saying? I mean, that's what we want to know that when we get response times, or when we have a call, right? That, I believe so. I mean, we, we, what do you... Well, there is, I think we want, to, we want to meet the standards that are set. Okay. Because, I, you know, very much failure, they're a staff 24-7 department. Correct. They I, have a lot more people in their cities to mm -hmm. cover that. We have the B10s contract. That's a kind of a baseline if you're combining EMS and fire, mm -hmm. that we kind of would come out of our budget per se, you know. And to enable a 24/7 well, firehouse here and keep it the same per capita and have a B a B10s contract, I don't think can happen. Period. So okay. So is that because of our lower population? A large portion is because of our lower population, absolutely. Right. And I see that too. That makes you sense. Know, it does. So it, it makes total sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so I guess what we would be looking for is the, a level of coverage that can grow and maintain as we develop. You know, we did, I, I don't know what we're going to need, like what our business plan. Do you have our projected growth in the town of Berlin, or is that Tom? You know, I mean, it's all a lot of variables. Yeah. I also would like to see an expansion, like, I think it was great that you did the survey and 100 responded, mm -hmm. but I think it would be really important as we move forward to get the input of all residents, whether it's, you know, several mini meetings or one huge meeting that's, you know, publicly announced, and the residents come and really hear your presentation. 
our viewpoint, etc. I think it's really important to include the folks of the town as well as part of the decision process. Okay. So, I want to make sure, Joe, that I address your question um, as far as the level of coverage and as far as the, that, that piece. And then we'll move on. We've been on this topic for a while. Um, are you laughing at me? I'm laughing with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think, obviously, that from all that, you know, we wouldn't be able to maintain that same level of coverage. But I think that the data, we want the specific on the data. We want what you, I mean, you're a Berlin resident. Not that that is a deciding factor, but yeah. you, you, you kind of have a, I mean, everybody on that department has a good idea of where the town's going and, and where it's at today. And you know that you're, you can see what you can see what's going to work and what's not going to work in the future. That's why you've decided that your, the model that you're currently running under needs some, some restructuring. You know, obviously, you can see where the town is going in some regards to maintain at least the level of coverage that we have now or better in the future and continue to grow with the town. So that's, I guess, what we would like to see. If that makes sense. And I know you guys, you guys do a great job. And I must feel like we just. I, I feel I, I want to thank you. I, I don't. I, I just want to get some information out there, and I think we all get a little bit passionate about it. So you guys put in a lot of hard work and dedication. I do thank you for that. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to ask? Not at this time. Not at this. Yeah. Okay. Thank you all. Just, thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, RV Technologies quote for review and discussion. <clears throat> yeah, I'm just, uh, again, looking for the approval to uh, to move forward if possible. Yes. This, this was able to sign and move forward on. This was the same discussion we had at the last meeting, right? Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. This is for the server upgrade for the equipment. Uh, the other thing that uh, I'd just like to point out to, for a topic of discussion is relocating the server equipment into one row. Right, right now, part of it's in it's part of it's in there, and part of it's behind Rosemary. But when they do this upgrade, I'd like to re reroute it and put it all in the the old bathroom, I guess is what it is, on the front of the building over there. Um, so it's all in one location. So when they come to service it, it's quicker, easier, uh, more efficient that way as well. Consolidate that. This is, it is. It's, uh, the prices are a little bit more, um, obviously based on the availability of, you know, equipment. So we're talking about 15,000? Yeah, it's, it's, actually it's a little, yeah. 15,300 roughly? Roughly. Okay. So it's, it's not too much over, we, we talked about around 15 grand. Right. So we're... That's what we have in the reserve, we have like 17. Again, I know we're going to come to an ARPA discussion later, but I think we can use ARPA funds for this as well. If you go over what we Just a real quick question, because uh, this is going back to another discussion on uh, the possibility of using space at the mall. Is mm -hmm. this going to affect this at all if that happens? The, the easy answer is no, because the second part of this discussion is also standardizing the equipment that all the staff has uh, so that they can have access off-site okay. so they can work from home. Basically, we're looking at laptops um, for everyone standardized, right? So everybody gets the same laptop with the same software on it, and we manage the access through the software as well so that if we have inclement weather, we have another COVID thing we have to shut down, everybody can have their laptop and be just like they're sitting at their desk. Okay. Yep. Right? Yep. Okay. So, have, so if they had to go over, to the, if we moved, we moved the waterworks over to the mall. They pick up their laptops, they it's walk over, work. they sit okay. down, they log in. That's all I wanted to know. <laughs> <laughs> Where is the exact figure that you folks quoted of the fifteen three? I think you're on the page right there. Yeah, but I didn't see uh, the fourteen three. 
but it's 14325 mm -hmm. uh, for products and services together. Mm -hmm. There's a monthly fee of 448 mm -hmm. um, and, they'll be, and they'll be asking for 8355 prepay for the software and hardware. Okay. Right. What that doesn't include is what I just said the part two. It doesn't include laptops um, and the docking stations. It's a standardized thing. Mm -hmm. I, we don't have a quote from them on that yet, but it's roughly about either way, says, is necessary, right? uh, either way this is necessary because the equipment that we have is past end of life already. They can't even upgrade some of it, update some of it anymore. Mm -hmm. So I would entertain a motion to uh, do the uh, RB, our, uh, RB technologies quote. Oh. Go ahead. I'd make a motion to go with the RB technology quote. Uh, with the numbers as specified in the poll. And I'll second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Motion, motion Aye. carries. <laughs> and polymorphic, the poll going. Uh, and again, this, is one that we, this is one that we talked about. I was asked to go back and try to negotiate a little bit lower with them. I was able to. You'll see it in the adjustment. I got, I got uh, basically 15 cents per capita off. So for every resident, we got a 15, 50 cent discount for each of the years so on there, years. plus an additional month free. So we went from two to three months free for the pilot program, and then um, 50 cents off and per Dave, capita. Dave, you might not have. I'm not familiar with this. I'm familiar with this. So what this is, this is a, basically a customer relationship management software. Um, and process management. And process management. So it will help streamline. Um, any projects that we have ongoing, it'll, it actually should be a huge administrative tool. Yeah. Um, okay. that I, there's been other municipalities that have used that had excellent reviews. Um, town of S, uh, town of St. Albans. St. Albans. I've yeah. talked to them, and it, it, you know, you can pull up <clears throat> pretty much any data that you want. It also would work. I, I don't remember what work with um, like records. Yes. So like it's saved uh, records. So if you want to report, right? Again, the, the, it's it's labor intensive up front for the staff. To be honest, you're gonna, we're going to have I'm going to have a lot of headaches with that at first um, because you have to learn how to use it, and it's a, it's a math, method it's of tagging me. everything. But this software will also link mostly to your phone me. system, so we can we can upload the grand list into this. If a resident calls in and wants to report a pothole, it'll it'll register that call. It'll have it. If the same resident wants to call and pay his taxes, it'll be there. So by resident, you can pull up, see the activity, and you can also run other other reports directly from that, as long as we enter it correctly and tag it correctly. Again, the, the, the town of St. Albans has been using it for just like 12 weeks. They've established over between five and 700 uh, records already with that. And so they're gathering, a, as he said, they're gathering a lot of data right now uh, that's going to pay off down the road for that. And what's the cost associated with? So it's it's the first three months are of no cost. The next uh, first year is approximately total annual cost of seven thousand forty dollars a year. Yep. See that on page two. I do see it on page two. So, I didn't yep. see it before. So it was three dollars, four dollars, and five dollars uh, instead of two fifty, three fifty, and four fifty. Mm -hmm. But Vince got them negotiated mm -hmm. down fifty yeah. cents per. Yeah, understood. So year is three, four, and five. It's twelve thousand a year. Twelve thousand yep. six seventy-two. Yep. Correct. Yep. So again, this one we're just looking for an approval or not to move forward. And are you going to be able to use any of the ARPA funds for this as well? Yes. Well, depending on the board's decision, yes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they so, do qualify for ARPA funds. So the it way, does we, qualify, the way okay. we had left it, I believe. Um, at the meeting and you maybe were virtual flow was at the last meeting we discussed it they were at they were here we were happy with moving forward yes i recall uh but mm -hmm. we wanted vince to negotiate right i do recall that and mm -hmm. so he did and then yes. we're ready to further yes. mm -hmm. yeah i recall all that and thanks for all your efforts well done I make the motion to um, move forward with the proposal for polymorphic uh, based on the discussion this evening. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor 
say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, so we got the Vermont State Revolving Loan Fund Agreement approvals. Yes. I tried to tag them to give you a little more information. The first one is is 100% subsidy for the Riverton Village Wastewater Project. And that's, that's for the amount of, I forgot to put the amount on that one. That's the wastewater project for 34700 yeah. And is that, that's for the old general store, right? Yes. It's in that area. The second one, it's for the asset management plan, and that's a 50% subsidy. And uh, the Hospital Hill uh, gravity line. And there should be more details in your package. That's yeah, so 84, 860. Is that what that is? Yes. yes. And I'll just give you the third one as well. Same time, that's the three acre stormwater project around the Berlin Town Center. That's 100% subsidy, so there's no town funds on that one. And that's for 157, 820. And again, the, the details, there should be more details in the package that you have. <laughs> the Berlin Town Center? I'll give you a map of here in a little bit. Oh, okay. Um. Now, on our agenda under the Public Works Board, it says 84.6, but on the paperwork it says 84.860. Which one is the correct? For the Public Works one. It's got to be the 84.860. I think it's the 84.860. Okay, I'll just change it on the other. I, I'm not very good at typing. So That's no <coughs> problem. It so happens. I, I don't. So, uh, fill, fill me in on the previous discussions about this, actually. On the gravity line. Where were we at? Uh, where was the. I'm trying to recall any discussions around it. I mean, we have it in the packet. Um, this would obviously. Is this fun? The other 50% is coming out of funds that the Public Works Board has in place for this already in their current budget. Um, I do believe the money's going to be coming out of the Public Works Board. Right. right. It's not coming out of anything that we have. And it's already. Not from it's, the general. From my all, understanding, it's not the general. Fund. Right. It's right. already in their budget currently. Or in I don't know so if they budget. have it in the budget. Yes, just because this is probably going to be more in FY23. And it's, it's an asset for them. It's different than a general fund, but there's certainly funds available in the sewer okay. commission. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. There's no issues there. I would make a motion to authorize the uh, state revolving loan fund as presented uh, for the village of Riverton Wastewater Project, Public Works Board and Assessment, Assess Management Plan for Hospital Hill Gravity Line, and the three acre stormwater project for the town center. I'm going to second that motion. All right, any further discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. So we've got Joel and Michelle Hermit for right away. We've got um, yes. Joel and Michelle Baker, the Block 35, Point Ridge Road, Berlin. Uh, this one's driveway a, access to building site. Yeah, this one's a little bit unique if you look at the map. Um, this was approved before the recent building regulations went into effect, apparently. Um, there's two options here. Um, if the board is, is not sure, to be really honest, this can go in front of the DRB for a full review um, because you can see that it's a, it's a very narrow band between two existing lots and the driveways will be side by side. That access will be right beside the, the next lot's driveway as well. So do they have a building permit there? Yep, yep, they have that. Um, they have, so they, 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 need, they need access to the lot. Right, so have, I mean, they obviously have got the permit and they're just requesting uh, permission for the permit. So they, they, they did the application, they, they have a curb cut already. The, the 
this is what they're asking for right now is the curb cut. The driveway and the curb cut. That's why, yeah. I would agree. I would, I would, I would typically think that they, I thought they came to us just basically uh, no. applying it was okay, but. No, that's um, why I said. So it, if they it, have a building permit, how could they have a building permit for that access? Apparently, it, uh, uh, yeah, apparently it was approved this, uh, before the previous zoning, right? So they. Sure yep. Yeah. So I'll I'll, okay. refer, I'll refer this to the DRB then, mm -hmm. based on. I would concur. Yeah. Thank you. Makes sense. I'll mean, be for I'm at the DRB. Yeah. yeah. Hi. Hi. It's, it's uh, uh, Trish, Trish Starr and Joel Baker, Baker here. Oh, we're sorry. Just, uh, sorry. I didn't realize you were joining us. I, yes. I yes. We've been, we've been oh, watching sorry. a long time. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. So maybe you can help us out here. Just. Yeah. Um, and Joel can probably speak more articulately about his lot um, than I can, but um, this has been a lot that's been in existence for some time. So what, are, what is it exactly you're posing then? Because we're trying to obviously make use of it and put it up for sale. We just want to make sure that we have access uh, to both of the lot. So the Developmental Review Board, uh, based on, they're, they're the ones that would typically issue the permit. Um, for a new curb cut, there's not an existing curb cut or, or, or dry, you know, this, this I would have thought, this is for, you know, basically maintenance. Typically when these come to the, the select board, they would be, maybe someone's changing out a culvert um, or, or making a change. I, I would have thought this would have gone through our zoning and then the DRB based on it being a new curb cut. Um, so, Really, I just want to send it through the proper channel. So, so uh, uh, Joel, Joel Baker, Baker here, property owner. Um, yeah. um, can Thanks you, for can you hear me okay? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, so um, I, I bought the slot along, along with four, four others, others in the neighborhood about 25 years ago, I think in 1995, maybe 26 years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, as, I understood, as I understood at the time, you know, the, the, the um, so the subdivision was all set up. Set up. It, it was a planned, planned residential development or a PUD planned, uh, yep. it was, whatever. So uh, there, wasn't there wasn't a whole lot of extra permitting required beyond that was my, was my understanding, understanding when I bought it. Now I'm, now I'm sure, sure stuff, has stuff has evolved a little bit in 25 years, but at the same, at the same time, time, it's a pre-existing lot, lot, I would think. think. I'm so sure. I'm not, it is I mean, it is, it's not a new subdivision, obviously. It's, not, it's a pre-existing lot. It shouldn't be. So, so it's, 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 and there's, and there's not even a right-of-way right involved. It's just, it's, it's, just, it's a, you know, it's kind of an irregularly, irregularly shaped lot, lot that um, is, behind is behind some existing lots. lots. So there's a, you know, there's, you know, there's a, a, an, access an access to it between my two neighbors. neighbors right? But um, I'm, just I'm just wondering. I'm just saying, I just would like. I agree. I understand where you're coming from, and I would be feel probably a little bit um, <laughs> frustrated or put off if I were in your shoes. But I think, given given the circumstance, the the what I would I would like to have it go through the developmental review board, just go in front of them and see what they say. And then if they they don't grant access, or they don't they don't think for some reason that you should be doing it, just so that we're following our proper procedure here now. Then, I, then we can bring it back up in front of the board and, and the board can make a decision, but I'd like to have them take go work through their process initially. Does that no, make, no. Does that no, make um, sense? Is it, is it possible for your zoning, zoning administrator to just to make, make an administrative decision? decision? I mean, a lot of times, I'm not sure, I'm not sure exactly how Berlin works, but typically, typically a ZA can approve, approve stuff oftentimes without full DRB, full DRB review. review. Yeah, absolutely, unless there's some trigger that would send it to the DRB. And on, I'm just looking at notes saying that it may need to go to the Developmental Review Board. Um, it may not. Have you talked to Tom Badowski about it at this point in time? Yes. Yes, he's fully, he's fully aware. aware. So, so, so I would have suspected he would have issued the permit if he was able to, because he does have the ability to do that. Then if Tom, if Tom can't issue the permit for whatever reason, the next step in the process would be for this permit application to go to the Developmental Review Board. So I'm not sure why it ended up here at this point in time. That's all I'm saying. We, we, we're not, we're sure, not either. sure either, but so, so, yeah, so I apologize for that. But I, I, I can clarify this with Tom tomorrow, because he's the one that said they need to go to the DRB. 
Okay, so Vince, Vince, Vince can clarify. You're welcome to call me tomorrow. And you, in the afternoon, I'll have a conversation with him in the morning. And uh, if they'd like to give me a call, I will have an answer for them. If, uh, if we can get time to approve it, or if it does need to go back to the DRB and why. You want to follow up with Vince tomorrow on that? We'd love, We'd to. love to. You Just... heard what he said, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I understand. I understand your frustration. Why you want to get? get the problem. Right, we're not frustrated, we're not frustrated yet, but it's just. <laughs> well, it's irritating. Whatever. It can, it can we'll quickly turn that. We'll get it sorted. We'll get it sorted out. I just want to make sure we go through the proper channels. Of that. Thank you, Bo. Yep. Thank you. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you. All right. Powerful fund usage discussion. So you asked for a little bit more detail. I tried to put the summaries in there of each one as well. I don't know if you had a chance to look at them yet. Right. I haven't had a chance to look at them, so okay. just looking at them now. As you see, the, the server equipment and the, the polymorphic software that we just talked about are on this list. They do they do qualify. And then one of the other things that I spoke to Tim a little bit mm -hmm. um, is even a little bit less less broad than the paving of the Riverton side across Town Road. Mm -hmm. um, there are some other areas on that hill that we thought about being able to do some stuff with, so I don't know if any of that makes sense to just look at um, on a smaller scale. Area that, but the paving is a pretty big project, which I I don't know if you can do the paving with ARPA funds. Yeah, I, you can I'm do still drainage, working to find out the drainage of the infrastructure. Yeah. Um, and then just resurface it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So so I don't know um, look at that. if we'd want to look at it from the drainage perspective in some of those key areas especially. Um, and, and see what... I almost feel like with the second round that might be good um, because we could see how well this this first section that we just put just in, how it holds up to the spring. Yep. Just the thought. Yep. Because um, if that section stays really good, then it might be worth looking at with a second allocation that we get using some of those funds for the maintenance down the road. I'll, I'll look into the, if, if that qualifies, because we also get, for that section that we just did, we're also getting some state funds for as well. Really? Mm -hmm. State funds in our economy. Mm -hmm. Coming out of our pockets eventually. Well, you know, we're one way or another, but. Do we have anything um, right now for covert inspection? We, we have that. We started talking a little bit about it. I know we touched on it a little bit. Can you explain I, I, that? I've got a call in to the Regional Planning Commission for the two that were requested for the cost that was requested for these out here. Right. Because we need a diver to go in and inspect those. Right. Um, beyond that, no, we, we don't right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've, I've got to work with the Regional Planning Commission okay. on a plan to do that. The last culvert of the inspection was done, though. We do have the report. Okay, good. Um, it's 2016. The intent this winter, basically, when we have some time, I'm going to sit with Tim, because some of those, I understand some of those culverts have been replaced, but the records haven't been updated yet, okay. and some probably have not. Right. So I want to go through all of those Makes from that sense. inspection that said needed to be to see mm -hmm. which ones we have replaced. Excellent. And then from there, build a plan with Tim Great. and a budget for the ones that we can replace ourselves mm -hmm. and what that'll be mm -hmm. and those that we don't think we can. Okay, like that's the great. Road one possibly. Not all be probably, not all be put into this probably Well, it'll be, it'll be put into the, the, the state program as well with the, the software that CBR Regional Planning Commission has. Yes. Because I want to update that report and get their input as well to reflect that. And then we can actually have maybe, because we have almost 500 culverts in town if nobody knows that. So right. figure out a five year and a 10 year plan exactly. to go through them all by priority. Um, so that, that's what I want to try to build with them. The other thing I was going to say is we should probably table the discussion 
at this point until all board members are with us for this. And this but is just this is this, Yes, absolutely. No, I agree. We, we, the good news is we still have a little bit of time, right? Mm -hmm. to, That's good. Yeah. This this was we added this as a basically a meeting room mm -hmm. kind of a brainstorming right. discussion. Makes sense. Um, and I'm sure Vince has a running tally of things that we can do. And we'll that's great. The it's much there. appreciated. Thank you. Uh, okay. Use of which tax stabilization agreement, Vince? Yep. That's in your package. So what you'll see in your package is the agreement that the uh, attorney has drafted up to submit uh, to Mr. Dusevich for signature on that. It will start this year, as we talked about in the last meeting. And it's based on the municipal portion of the taxes and not the education as it's outlined in the in the uh, program to do so the, the the impact right now will be we'll have to go back and revise and resubmit this year's tax bill that he's already received right yeah. but we started it we started this year rather than at completion right which is so normal we'll get the full value a year earlier basically which I'd like to say, well, while we're on this topic, again, that the town needs to take another look at their tax stabilization policy uh, and make sure uh, it fits the, the, I mean, a lot of people's perspectives are that they're going to develop up here regardless, um, whether there's stabilization or not. And some people say, well, maybe you look more at developing, you know, blanket structures or, or redeveloping. As opposed to this, this uh, you know, one of the arguments when this passed back when I, I was doing my first year on the board, I think, well, was that they were going to build here anyway, but we had let them go through the entire process, checked off all the boxes, fit everything to a T to meet the stabilization policy that the town has set in place, and then after they had spent the money and the time with, with their professional staff. And met all the requirements. There were some people that thought that maybe we shouldn't give it them. That we shouldn't have them do this because they were going to build here anyway. And I, I, I think that the town needs to look at their stabilization policy um, because they, a lot of people, this is a desirable area to build, and we probably maybe we don't need the stabilization policy up here, and, and maybe we don't need one at all. But maybe we need it for redevelopment. Who knows? But the only thing that's changed with this from our discussion is we just got definitive dates and our attorney's given it the stamp of he's, approval. He's, so. he's developed it because this, again, everything was approved, went through the process, but the agreement was never drafted and done. Mm -hmm. So that's what this is. Mm -hmm. it, it, it'll be able to close this one out. We can mm -hmm. issue it, get it signed, and, and close this out. And acknowledging the dates, the 2019 yep. dates, and just putting a seal of approval on it. Yep, yep. and the start date. Because it wasn't the, the start date was never made clear. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so we entertain. We're ready for a motion, unless you have more discussion. I don't have any more discussion. Um, I make the motion to go forward with the deuce of its tax stabilization agreement as presented tonight and the discussion surrounding. I second it. Any discuss? Any further discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Uh, motion carries. Potential buyout of 4509 Vermont Group 12 property. Yes. So finally, finally, um, the state came back to me with a program that we qualify for for 100% buyout of that property, as provided that the uh, the owner volunteers to sell it. Which I got a hold of the owner. He came in on last Friday and he signed the statement of voluntary participation to do this buyout. Um, how it works, how the program works is they'll have someone come in, do an assessment, fair market value, the condition of the property, um, including, they will include also the cost to tear the building down, make it a vacant clean lot as well. That will be included at 100%. Um, but the buyout will work, we'll get the money, there's 28000 uh, roughly, plus taxes. or minus, in back taxes yeah. that the town will recover from the payment of the buyout, he, he will get basically whatever's left, if there's anything left, he, he will get that. The <coughs> owner will get that. But he's okay, honestly, he's okay if he gets nothing. He, he had to say he wanted me to 
uh, send his uh, regrets and apologies to the board, you know, that he had to abandon the place. But it, it had flooded a year before, right after he bought it, apparently, in the basement. Had to replace two furnaces and all this. He told me the whole story, but he wanted me to refer his apologies to the board as well That's for this. But he was, he was happy to uh, have the opportunity to uh, work with us on this. And this, so, this really is good for Vince. I brought this house twice to tax sale, and no we haven't been able to sell it. Not at all. Nope. So kudos so this, to Vince. Good job. Mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely yeah. kudos Excellent. to all of you. Very That's impressive. Very I also job. see it includes the it ensures elimination of a potential contamination of waterway in the future. Right. You know. And, if it floods and gets into the waterways, there's potential. That's you know, it's excellent. an old building. There was concern of lead. There right. was concern of asbestos. Right. So. Understandable. Thank yep. you all. So the objective is this, is to get your approval to proceed with this and uh, and move it, start moving forward. I make forward. a motion to proceed with the potential buyout of 4509 Vermont Route 12 property as discussed. I will second that motion. No further discussion. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Municipal planning grant, 20K. I feel like we've had this conversation. You have. You had asked for some additional information, so I, I, got the, uh, I got the additional information attached from the application that Tom had done uh, on this. So there's, there's, there's a whole lot of words to read in there, um, if you haven't yet. Two point four is, is the, the more detailed project description. I think of what you were looking for initially. Yeah. So we're going to select a, the, the planning commission will select a consultant, <coughs> right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Who, who would that be? Do we know? How do they? How what's their process for that? Don't. No idea. It should go out. For it should go out. To at least three people for RFP, right? It's yeah. going to be over five grand, so yeah, I mean, we'll have to we'll monitor that. And I know you will. Look good. Yes. But this is for the grant for that. It's a 2K um, contribution, right? By the by the we, town. We spend 20 and we get 2K match. Yeah. Yes, have any questions? Or? We've done these in the past too, right? Yeah. They've been useful? Yes. Yep. Just one word smithing thing under 2.4 above the word approach in the sentence just above, just changing the word to before town to the. It's just a wordsmithing thing. Yep, I got it. But that sounds good. I like that. All right, because our last one was 18. Mm -hmm. I understand. I think this one was applied for last year, but we didn't, we, we didn't receive it. We weren't selected for this grant. This is the comp one of them that may be a competitive grant. Oh. Yeah. So I, I did. Uh, um, funding needed. What other funding source may did you consider, and why is this uh, municipal planning grant program the best source to fund this? ARPA funds, huh? Municipal planning grant is the best source funding that is all the municipal match for the municipal funding. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Hi. Hi. Hey. Where's the thug? I didn't know you were showing up. There's a chair. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this guy? <laughs> That's the new John. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So we are just rolling through this baby now. Uh, and we are at the municipal planning grant. We're at 7 o'clock on your agenda. So this was just a, we wanted some information last time we deferred this conversation. We wanted some additional information on where specifically the grant is going to be. Oh, 
or where the, the planning was going to be, yeah, where we were going to, the, the plan was going to be. It sounds like it's the entire town. So true. <laughs> Anybody want to talk about this? I think it's great. Mm -hmm. You know what that means. I think John wants to make a motion. Or you might have questions. He's just barely got here. And yeah, we I don't want to I rush haven't him. quite got there yet. Um, I'm finding it in my pocket here. It's all right. Not a problem. I'm just picking. Uh, beyond, right. beyond, we'll go a little deeper, a little deeper. Next one. Next one. Next one. That'll give you time to look at it before you make any. Uh, next one. Give me that, that one right there, I think. So did we get the... Throw here, yeah. 2.4. Yeah. One of the things I just talked to, to Vince about was if they, you know, making sure that we're consulting with our RFP instead of you know, making sure that they're following that process and procedure. Discussed it and thought it was important. The last one we did was 18. And we made a bunch of changes. My understanding, though, was they also they applied for this, and I guess the board approved them last year, but we didn't receive it. It's a competitive one as well, so they, it wasn't awarded. Um, you know, my yeah, I, I understand your question there. If we're ready for it or not, um, because it seems like we we're moving at a, a, a relatively fast pace where things can get kind of lost in the process. Um, and, and we need to make sure that all the departments are working. Well, it just seems like we have a lot of different things going on around the Newtown Center all at once. And we have a lot of different grants and a lot of different calls in the air. Right. But, um, there is a lot going on. And here's another one, right? I yep. mean, and, and while it's, it's great, I mean, what kind of position are we in to do something like this? And, in the near future. And honestly, if we're so going to this, do something this kind of leads into the discussion I had with you earlier that I'm going right. to bring up at the round table. Well, and, and so part of my, what our part, strategy priorities are. Yeah, we are kidding. So, but part of the process and why I wanted to know about this is I would almost think that uh, I don't know if it would be benefit if it would be a benefit or if it a detriment to have the same consulting firm doing one of these. I mean, a, a municipal plans for us that's already been involved in the town center. Maybe, maybe sometimes a different perspective makes more sense. Uh, Place sense has done the last two. Right, that's what I'm saying. So I would, I would almost, I would almost think that it would be okay to. I, I almost feel like it would be a, a good thing to do, uh, but I would like to see somebody else do it, and not just because I. We do have so many balls juggling in the air, like you're saying. We have so much going on. I feel like that we don't have a lot of checks and balances in place. So that if, if we did do it, my recommendation would be to maybe have another consulting firm take a look at it. Just because we'll, I think that we'll would be a three different, different, different yeah, perspective. Yeah, we have to put it out for bid. We'll three go to different. three different ones. We don't have to send it to them. Right. But, but I, you do bring a valid point, Don. Um, I don't know. What other information you would need to make a decision on that? Would, would you like to have the, the Planning Commission come in to discuss this further? I guess I, I'm having a hard time visualizing all the different things going on. 
right, and where they are, and where does this fit into the overall bigger project? Yes, at some point we need to at least strongly consider moving the municipal center to the or the municipal uh, offices or some town entity to the new town center. But right. at what point in the future there's nothing over there, right? I mean, this is <coughs> like this is a 20-year plan, really, when you think about it. You know that area. And What's the sense of urgency? Well, I'm just I'm just wondering if this is the the best way to spend our money right now, and what that what that roadmap looks like. Like, what are the steps and where? Like, what about the roads? What so about what, the, so the roads? Well, we're going to talk about the roadmap. Okay. Later, and we don't know I'm what just, that looks like. So I'm just unsure. I, I read the the Facebook post from a community member about the school um, land. Transfer, and you didn't see it. Mm -hmm. I didn't see and it either. Close. There, there was some discussion on, you know, whether the project would be dead if the the su supervisory district didn't deed over the land to the town for a new entrance to the That's new town center. Part of our roundtable discussion. Okay. Yeah, I I just don't know how it all fits together. So, so you know, my my thought would be when I look at this, I would I would I you're right. I agree. I, I almost I feel like for municipal planning we need to have almost another like we can't just keep going down the same path we're going. We almost I almost want to have we don't know how it fits together, and so another fresh perspective might not be a bad idea. But I don't know that I'd like to have the planning commission come in to talk about it. That is, is what I would be able to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, where does this fall in the place of you know the the new entrance and how does that change site perspectives potentially if we don't do the new site entrance because the school doesn't need over the land and it changes the entrance does that change our site locations and does this make this invalid at some point or rule out certain spots based on that i i don't know but i just worry that we'll just put in a kind even of though it's grant money for the most part we'd be throwing it away it's right only two thousand left well, 2,000 of ours, 20,000 of theirs, right? Mm -hmm. Where did I get that back? No, it's 2,000 oh, of ours. Yeah, it's 2,000 of yeah. town money. So, like, yeah. I, I recognize, like, it's a, you know, it's a, I don't, it's not free money, but it's, it's, it's paid for by all the owners rather than right. just for Wynn residents. Yeah. But I just want to make sure that, like, you know, we have some questions answered about, you know, timing. I don't want to do this and find out it's, you know, or, or have it be 12 years down the road or rush into this because we need so many other things done in place and we don't have any money for any of those things. And speaking of timing, when do you need the final decision so that this moves forward accordingly? I, 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 I'm not sure when the deadline for the application needs that to be. That would be important. Well, I can, yeah. I can yeah, find that out. Because that's a valid I, point. Everything the next time you this comes up on, we can table this for tonight, the next time it comes up on the agenda, why don't we ask the planning commission to be here? I, I did a note to have the planning commission here. We'll and talk in the about meantime, it. you can and look at the think, date. And if I think this conversation is going to come up again in just a little bit. Yeah, as okay. well. we'll table this. So, okay. Thank you. In line with what John is talking about as well. So. Thanks so much. Sorry, Flo, no motion. No. That's <laughs> right. See, I told you there would be some discussion. Approval of license permits, vouchers, and applications. Oh, actually, before we do that, uh, let's talk about the Mrs. Lassard's letter request uh, okay. from the select board for the permit. Um, I put that one in mind. Uh, so, Mrs. Lassard lives. Mrs. Lassard lives on the Junction Road near the Montpelier sewer treatment plant. They're they're applying for a permit. She was notified as being a, a bordering neighbor. Uh, they're applying for a permit to increase their capacity for treatment uh, from areas outside of town. And they've had a problem with air quality down there. Um, the residents, um, her in particular, um, with regards to the treatment plant this summer. She talked to the state, and the state recommended to her that she speak to her neighbors and uh, get them on board with a statement to the state rep for air quality and also to her town select board to see if they would be interested in writing a letter in support of her approach to follow up um, with regards to the air quality because there's nothing in the permit or plan that addresses the air quality for the treatment capacity increase that they're that they're looking at 
So with that support, she can go back to the state, and they will they will talk to the city of Montpelier and look into this about what can be done to mitigate some of the smell um, that they're getting throughout the summer when they're when they're running the treatment plant. I did, did Has I, I Montpelier didn't shared their perspective? Have you done any research as to perspectives she, from she's, Montpelier? She's been to the, the council meetings and such with those, but uh, they're in, in her nice words, as she said, they really haven't uh, provided any feedback with regards uh, to the plan yet. So I'm, I'm, if the board agrees, I'm happy to draft a letter that the board can review uh, with regards to that in support of, of her approach to address this. And I will reach out to, uh, I have the, the state rep's name for air quality to have a discussion with him, what are his expectations that he expects to see in the letter that would help the situation out. Okay. Yeah, I would draft a letter. I'm not opposed to our involvement. I uh, appreciate that she came forward with her concerns and if we yeah. can be helpful. She's been a long time resident, I guess. She said she's lived there for 42 years or 44 years, so. Next, we have appointment to the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission and the Transportation Advisory Board. Uh, Bob Warnick. Bob Warnick. I, I spoke to Bob. It's a yearly um, appointment that comes up. Uh, it's due. I asked him if he would still be interested in uh, volunteering his time and efforts for the town in that capacity, and he, he did say that he was. He'd be willing to do that if, if the board so chose to have him do so. Um, I know we had had discussion around appointing people to the appointment process around things like the, uh, uh, All the conservation commission and things like that. Do we advertise or get the word out that that, that was a position? This one in particular, we, we, we did not. I, feel like I know what, what Bob has. Um, he's looking for somebody yeah. to, to replace him he actively. Has, he has mentioned that. He, he, he's actively looking. So. Uh, from our side, no, we have not done anything with respect to that, but he has. I know that he has. So how does the board feel about that um, potential of appointing somebody without doing that when we've asked the other places to do that? I think it's commendable in this regard, given that um, Bob has the long-standing historical experience, as well as that he's willing to do it, combined with the fact that he's trying to actively recruit. Um, I think we would be well suited to appoint him and thank him for his services at the same time. That's my take. Okay. I just want to make sure that I do this. So. What, what I will do is I will include these positions in the monthly, because it's a yearly thing, right? Okay, so I'll put it on there obviously to make found, it aware. Found, mm -hmm. If you found a replacement, um, Bob, would, Bob, would, Bob, Bob would, would be pretty happy. And let him take over and help him. So it would be my, my thought. But mm -hmm. I just wanted to make sure we address that since we've been pretty yeah. stern about that process in the past. So, mm -hmm. But I will make this part of that going forward as well. If anybody wants to make a motion, that would be good. I'd make a motion to um, appoint Bob Warnick to the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. I second that motion. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. We also need to uh, transportation advisory board. Oh. Make a motion to appoint uh, Robert Warnick to the transportation advisory committee as our representative. Second. Right. Any further discussion? Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. I just want to back up just real quick too because I did find my notes. I do have the fact sheet for that Montpelier permit if anybody wants to see it as well for the wastewater in my office. I didn't make a copy of that because it's like six pages long. Yep. Thank you. will draft it up if anybody wants it. All right, so uh, next, approvals of license permits, vouchers, and applications. I make a motion to approve payroll warrant 22-07 for payroll from September 12th of this year to September 25th of said year paid on September 29th, 2021 in the amount of $45,096 
and 50 cents. Also payroll award 22G05 with checks 21461 to 21497 in the amount of $136,195.74. In addition, September recon reconciled bank statements for the general fund and sewer water checking accounts and the September journal entry. There's no. I'll second that. Any discussion? It's an addition. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. The approval of minutes for our May 27th will have to be removed from the agenda um, since John and I were absent. But we do have the addition of the May 17th minutes to the agenda that we can approve. We have approval of the minutes from May 17th, 2021. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Um, been submitted the by the state round table. Yep. Sorry, we'll add that in real quick. Um, just yeah, we'll have stuff for that. You know, we we're gonna let Vince go first today. <laughs> I only have a small pile of things. Um, first item is um, from the last meeting, John, uh, with, with the police chief about another quote. He did go out to um, the one that I think you had mentioned, MHQ. Mm -hmm. And he, we do have the quote. It it's should be cheaper. in your package. It's about eight hundred dollars cheaper. So well, he's over ten percent. Yeah. So again, uh, where where good. is MHQ from? Uh, couldn't tell you. I know that all I know. I think it's Washington County that uses them. Uh, yeah, Washington County Sheriff. Somewhere in Vermont, I don't recall. Off the There's company. local as the other company. Yeah, yeah. the third company I, I had heard of was out of I think North Adams, Mass, and that's the one that was, which was the one he was talking about. So I didn't forward that one on, but this one, um, I had reached out to a couple other departments, and they they were aware of this company and said others were using it. So, yeah, excellent. No actions needed, but we'll get. We'll get with the chief, and, and I think he's got, I think he's got, gonna go with them. So he's comfortable with them. He's checking them out. Good. Um, the other one, I don't know if you've uh, had a chance to review the summary, but from the meeting with Mr. Covey, the history report is right here. I did send you all a summary of that with a with an email saying where I think there might be some opportunity to clean things up a little bit. Okay. Um, so we'll spend some time on that and. Uh, you and I can plan it out for us. Yep. But it, thank again, you for doing that. thank you. Mm -hmm. You've got you've got quite a package. If you want the details, they're all right here. I'll probably come out and talk to you about it. And you've got the summary as well. Very much appreciated. So that that one's done. Uh, legal services. Uh, we put it out to bid. Yep. Uh, we've got one response from our existing uh, firm. Hmm. They have they have basically instead of one person, they have at least two. Uh, that will will be willing to, to service their rates. Um, I know they've been with us a long time. I checked with Diane today. They went up about twenty dollars an hour in the new quote. They were two hundred. They went to two twenty. No, it's over standard for that. Question. The the I'm not asking for a decision tonight because I know Flo had asked me to advertise with the Mount Bar Association. Mm -hmm. I had to wait till Diane got back with the company credit card. Because to do it online, it's about two, 150 bucks. Mm -hmm. I can put it on there for another week. Yep. We'll see if we get any responses, and then I'll bring it to you for a decision. Thank you. In the meantime, they're still filling the bill for us without it. And are they completing the tasks that we're assigning to them at this point, or are we falling a little bit further and further behind? They are. They're talking with me weekly on the progress of of the critical ones that we have in works with them right now that uh, Rob had going. That he's transferred over to them. Unfortunately, he transferred it over to them, so they're they're doing some background work to get up to speed on it to make sure they do the right things for us. So okay. I'm okay with their progress, to be honest, okay. with the with the we're transfer okay. right we're now. Feel like there's anything urgent that's not being addressed. No, not yet. Okay. Then I have the question regarding we have one person on staff on the police force. He's a military member. He's going on uh, a week. 
Five days. Yeah. Five days. Uh, the question came up, we don't have anything in our policy whether we pay them or we don't pay them. And according to the state statute as well, it's, it's, he has to take a leave of absence for that time, and it's up to the employer whether we pay them or we don't pay them during that leave of absence time for military service. Would that be in their contract? It is not. Are they getting paid by the military while they're gone? They, they get their military pay, yes. I, mean, I would think that if it's not in their contract, that I mean, we kind of have to stick to the contract at this point. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what, if they weren't getting paid, I don't know. Um, I, mean, I think the payment question is big, but I mean, what, <clears throat> I mean, we've had similar things come up in recently where we're, and it's non military, non public service, so to speak, uh, where we've had people that have had to leave or have other things going on and we've made decisions based on that that if it wasn't addressed in our union contract and then, then we were going to stay status quo if it was addressed and we would follow the contract and based on where we're at with negotiations right now I don't know what what our I don't know what the board wishes but I mean I know that's what we thought in the past right I'm only going to throw this out there that I don't know what his military pay is but I think that personally anybody supporting this country, I would be entitled to subsidize the difference. That's just my opinion. And I'm, you know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. just me. Yep. Being mm -hmm. prior military, you know, I, mm -hmm. that's how I feel about it. Yeah, if there's a difference in pay, you mean if he's getting less, less money? Less yeah. through the military, I would, I would, I would feel more intent to subsidize the difference yep. for that service. Mm -hmm. I would, So that's not an action item since it's round table, but that'll have to be yeah, an action it'll item. It'll have to be an action item because Diane's going to need an answer because she has to I pay him soon. I have to do cable on Friday. It just came up to me today. Maybe we can do this one retroactively for that? I think so. Because he's, then we're going to need some information as well to be able to right. provide and that. Yeah. I don't think his expectation is for us to pay him. So, so, so if we relay that that's the board's intent, and if he wants to provide documentation, we'll be able to, to, to make a decision at the next meeting and actually have a have it be an agenda item and take a vote. Then I feel we'll, we'll either, fine it'll either be an agenda item or it won't be. Um, and it, yeah. Okay. okay. I'm almost done. I only got two more items. Okay. So. Thank you. So we're the big one. Yeah. So to our earlier conversation, John, about the planning, um, I had a conversation earlier with Justin as well. Um, I had heard that in the past that we had done select board retreats. And I just wanted to throw that out there to the board, whether it's a day, whether it's an afternoon, whether it's a couple of evenings, because, again, I'm the, I'm the new guy coming in, and there's all this stuff going on, and it's, it's, like you said, it's hit or miss. It's all over the place, and we don't have a real strategy of where we want the town to go and how we're going to get there. And I think, you know, my suggestion is that we sit down for whatever time period we need to and, and figure out what that strategy looks like. What does the five years, what does the town look like in 10 years? What does it look like? And what are our steps that we need to take and make a priority to get there? I mean, there's a lot of little things that we can do, but there's a lot of big stuff going on that, eh, it's, you know, is it really what we need and is it what we want? I mean, we got police to talk about. We got fire department to talk about. We got new town center to talk about is it the right location is it the wrong location is it is it the right size is it the wrong what is it i right? think it's a commendable recommendation so yeah just why why, why, why are, are we doing, doing it what is what is the, what is the benefit we're getting out of what's there right now i'm not sure but i'm sure there must be some somewhere somebody smarter than me came up with it so well, i think it's a good <laughs> idea because that'll allow us to have a casual more of a casual come open dialogue just in the evening after it's dark out, not on a weekend. But it, it, if you guys agree to have that, then I'll, I'll come up with a couple of proposals at times. I'll work with you, Justin. We did it in the last town we lived in, and it worked out well. And at least everyone got everyone kind of aligned on at least short and medium yeah, range right. goals to, to think about and to know where we're headed and to say, how does this fit into the longer-term strategy? Exactly. Exactly. So one of the things we talked about was not 
We can't. I mean, we have a we have probably more than one sort of retreat or whatever that it would take to kind of cover it where we left off or where everything else. Maybe you can be of assistance with the structure since you've done that in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we can streamline it and be ultra efficient about it. Um, but but I also we also can't take you know, four hours back to back to back to back to back. So you you tell me what the boundary lines are and we'll set it up that way. If it's six meetings that are two hours long or whatever, I'll figure I'll figure <laughs> it out. But I'm just you know again I'm I'm looking at it from all these things. I, I think there's a lot of hours involved to be honest, unless we really well, you know streamline it. I really want to yeah. delegate most of it. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. no, I mean I think the way I I think the we way, need to pick the, the top way five that work in my agency and whether we did it as a select board. Um, in Northfield each each select board member brought goals or things that they'd like to see. Um, and where they'd like to see the town head. We then developed, you know, overarching goals for the town and underneath those strategies. And when it came to the tactics, we left it to the administrator and the town manager to bring us back a plan on, you know, here are the short term things and here's why we're doing them. That'll get us there. Yeah. So I think one of the Something like that would work. I yeah. think. So just a select board retreat or would we invite other entities from our other boards from our town? I would I would start with just our board. Okay. Um, it'd be helpful if we had a, an outside mediator, <laughs> someone just to kind of make sure we stay moving and don't go down a, a I, huge. Road I can play that role. I facilitated. Yeah, I don't think there. we need an outside I'm mediator. I'm happy to do opinion. that. I you know, I, I've got some thoughts I could probably throw in there to mix it up too. So. Okay. I mean, you know, as, as far as strategies and you know mm -hmm. and okay. such. We we'll give you a we'll give you the town plan and. You know, all that, all those things. And okay. If you're so willing. set up some yep. dates and times. And right. What are we thinking? About? People rarely go to them, but they are still public meetings. Right. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Just want to make sure. I'll warn them and, and, yep. and do all that and we'll figure out if we have them at the, I think we used the Grange in the past or whatever. And yeah. Okay. So I'll work on that. Set some up. Right. <laughs> Last one. Just a, an update or a discussion on the on the new town center and the school property status. I know uh, we've had some conversations. And I, you know, I I spent some time on that one today. Um, so you brought it up with the, the entrance, John. You actually, I got some maps and all, all kinds of pretty I pictures. I don't remember if I read it in the paper or if I read it on Facebook, but I know that there was. I know that there were. Probably both, but um, I don't remember exactly where I read it. But I knew the quotes that came from our zoning administrator left me a little concerned about. I didn't see the quotes from our zoning administrator. Well, but I did have a conversation with our zoning administrator. The so way I recall it was when asked directly if this would kill the project if the land wasn't deeded, um, he didn't have a great answer. Right. My understanding. So, well, sorry. So I, I spoke with. I happened to speak with a, a school board member today, um, and, and we talked about. I have to just talk about some other things. And one of their their number one concern was that there's you know the three three members from the town um, asked that same question, uh, and they all had different reasons why they may may be opposed to transferring this property, mm -hmm. um, and they were all relatively valid. In my Right. Um, well, let me start off with I made a phone call to Tom today about this. Okay, and because he wanted eagerly for us to put tons and tons of what I felt was pressure on the, the school supervisory union to give us this property back. Right. And this has been a discussion that we've had a couple of times over the years and prior to Act Forty Six. And we had talked with Heidenberg maybe about doing something where they could use this this 7.4 acre parcel, right, in exchange for maybe some 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 better upgraded facilities for our rec fields or you know build build out new little league fields and, and things out behind the school where they own because you can see that section that abuts the back boundary line right here mm -hmm. on the opposite yeah. side of the wetlands. 
would, they, there's a lot that they could do for the school, right? Um, sort of like a public-private venture like we've been discussing. Um, and, and my number one thought is, well, how does this benefit the town? What, like, why do we need this property so badly, right? Uh, number one, I believe when we started talking about this, we didn't, this, this, this concept right here, was this, this T, mm -hmm. that was the secondary. That was the what if, right? That was the what if. If, if we can get that, then great, we can relocate this road, mm -hmm. right? That we, the town already doesn't own, that the town doesn't have to maintain. Um, and now, for some reason, I was getting told that this is, this is our, this was the original, this is what we submitted, and this is our absolute plan. And I asked, and I got the answer, but it took a lot, is that it, it'll still work, right? We can still do that project. It, the, the, the grant money will still be there to fix and maintain that existing road. Um, and the, uh, however, we'll never relocate to the grid system that, that, that the state wants us to see, right? Or wants to see from us. Um, and I said, oh, well, because of 190 degree turn. Yeah, there. because it doesn't slow it down. So there's obviously other ways to address it. What yeah. I see when I look at this is I go, what is in it for the town? So we're going to start this fight. And if we do, what is in it for the town? Well, the, I was told there's potential for a town building there with 80 residential units above it. I'm like, well, the, the town's not going to build residential units and rent them. Right. Well, you would be able to sell it or lease it or something. And then I see there's another develop, another lot that can be developed here as a result of the restructure of this. Um, and so to me, this looks really advantageous to the mall, right? Or, or the developers in this area that would potentially buy this parcel and the questions. I don't, you know, when I look at it the way this road is, if you get rid of these drawings that he has in here, our road frontage, if the town were to get that property back, we have actually the town has more frontage if, if, if we don't put the T in. You see what I'm saying? If we actually have more frontage that way, that's better for us. So, what I see is that by doing this T, we've developed this additional building lot for somebody in there or created the space for an additional building lot in there. Um, so, from, from, from a perspective where the I think the supervisory union wanted to know was could the number one could the project continue without this them deeding this land over because they have concerns for the wetlands, the walking paths, the outdoor recreation that the children at the school utilize a lot, especially right. for the outdoor learning. Um, the answer is yes, that they could. But it was I was it took me a lot and I had actually used very bad tone. Um, to get that answer, because I felt like I couldn't give a straight answer, quite honestly. Yeah. Um, the, the next thing that the, the supervisory union, really what they wanted to know was like, what, what's in it for the school? And not what's in it from a monetary perspective. What, what the supervisory union was looking at was, okay, well, I almost feel like because of the level of the relationship that's been built there, somehow, it's evolved to almost a non-trusting relationship uh, because they couldn't get the answers that they wanted. Yeah. Um, so the, 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 the town of Berlin doesn't own that section of land, technically speaking, and that's Washington County, that's right. Washington County, right? So what I was questioning was why are we so involved in it? That's, that's supervisory union property, period, right? So why does the town need that property from the supervisory union? Why are we trying to be so forceful with them over this where they need to give it to so, us? I don't know that we are, right? Right. I know, but that's what we yeah. were, they were, I was, they, I was being right. persuaded into, or trying to be persuaded yeah. into being forceful with other, or the board members for, for the uh, supervisory union. It doesn't, I can see where there's benefits to the school where if they, they did the right thing, um, with like maybe some rec fields and, and some of the more community things. So Vince made an outreach call, um, which is where we had left the conversation years ago, and and got some results from 
I, I spoke with them all, my, my freshmen, this afternoon with regards to that, to understand, you know, what, what was the history based on what Justin had told me earlier. Um, and apparently when the, when the mall property was sold to the new owners, the Seidenberg group, the existing owners kept the development rights, so to speak, um, to that portion of property behind the school, the ones that were originally talked about putting ball fields in. And that's what killed that portion of it five years ago, apparently. They still have all the information. Um, he said that he would uh, speak to uh, his person at the mall that was involved with it then to see if they'd be interested in reopening those discussions with that company now five years later because obviously there hasn't been anything, any interest in that property, nothing's really moving for them. Uh, so um, they're, they're going to look at having some other discussions to see uh, if they can help by having something to offer to the school. So, uh, this, with so to essentially this seems, this seems like, and, and again, I don't know that we need to be directly in the middle of it, but I think uh, approached differently, this it seems like it could be a very easy transaction here of giving a right of way to do this in exchange for a new ball field over here. Let the super supervisory union keep the lot to sell in the future if they want, if they choose to. But that the amount of land that the the mall entrance or the new town center actually needs is very little. Right. It doesn't and, need to be all. Well, I'm, and, and I'm, I haven't been part of the dis discussion. I feel like we've been kept in the dark by our zoning administrator a little bit. Maybe not on purpose, but it just seems like you know if you approach the supervisory district, you know, nicely and said, you, "Could we have a right of way here in exchange? Let us help you, you know, build some new fields or do something." It seems like a win-win for everyone, even on the and existing the property without yeah. doing any property exchange. Right. With, and you know, if at some point in the future the supervisory wants to sell this lot for a existing building, well, it's going to benefit the the supervisory yeah, union and, and with, you know all of our property taxes. That's, that's a great great approach. So this this whole conversation prompted another level of concern for me um, because when we look at this, you said we right. We don't know. Um, if this is, we aren't necessarily the ones that are looking for this. We aren't the ones, right? Like, and I don't mean that in, in a way, but what I wanted to say was we have a lot of time and a lot of labor and a lot of expense going into this. There's been a lot of meetings, a lot of, a lot of payroll expense associated with this that hasn't come to the board that we have been maybe, un, it was not intentionally left in the dark about. Um, but this, this, like, who, who, where's our accountability? Um, how many hours have been spent on this? And why are we going down this rabbit hole without, without having this initial conversation? Because that perspective, John, that you just gave could potentially have saved hours and hours and hours and hours of labor and frustration and, and fr within the community and, and, and help that. So why, why, who, why are, why are we allowing our zoning administrator to just go out in, into the community and do these things and advocate as if they are on our behalf without us being more involved? Is, did they do that on behalf of the Planning Commission? Did they do that on while he was being paid by the Planning Commission? Or did he do that while he was being paid by the town of Berlin? All started. I'm playing catch up, to be honest. This all started before yeah, I came I guess board, I'm just so. concerned. There's a lot of work being done. Uh, and the planning commission is, you know, trying really hard to do, you know, in their view what's right here. I just think that we need tighter communication mm -hmm. because, you know, I don't think we have a good idea what's going on. We're reading it in other places on, you know, land deals that don't directly have anything to do with us, meaning it's not our land anymore uh, mm -hmm. from a municipality, but it definitely affects our, you know, future projects. Um, we have town employees, you know, giving quotes to papers um, without any of our knowledge. You know, if they were to call us, you know, if I hadn't read the article, I'd say, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Right? You know, that's not a, that's it's not a good place to be, and it's not a place that we should be. So Vincent, I think Vincent and I did talk about this. Um, no, 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 go ahead. 
and then this, I'll speak after. This project is one of the last ones that was sort of ongoing before Vince came on board, just so you guys know, because I asked about that a little bit. Um, and so I just wanted that to be clarified that Vince is catching up with us on this, and uh, it was one of the ones that was already going on. He's sorting through well, all the same questions. Yeah, no, I'm not are. placing fault. I'm just trying no, to I say just wanted it. we got a problem, and the solution is definitely tighter communication. Yep. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. I mean, and what I was going to add is that we bring this to the next board meeting and invite Tom to come and present to us more historical background, perspective, everything we just discussed to get everyone on the same page and to provide that understanding. I think that would be beneficial and then Brad will also be in attendance most likely and then we can all discuss it as a whole. That's my take. Can I, can I make a suggestion that perhaps we bring Someone from the planning commission too, or maybe well, Carla. That's what she's Carla will already be here for that meeting. She's, right now. Yeah. I was thinking she would be. So she's, I have no she's problem. She's got a lot invested in it as well, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. knows it very mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Yeah. Looking at this thing on that, on that, just one quick question. Do you have any idea what the? Because I'm looking at the volunteer fire department here. What's the? What's the? What's the agreement that the volunteer fire department has with? Ninety-nine year lease. Is it something? So what? I got Rob Halpert to recuse himself from this back in the back when this first happened. Prior to this, so what? I I wanted to do a quick boundary line adjustment and actually have the school in the parking lot, the entrance area, be its own separate property. And we were told we couldn't do it. And then my attorney actually looked into Dean from Dallas and Jack, and then reached out to Rob because he said it wasn't a conflict of interest. Even though his firm was representing the supervisory union. Um, I said, I feel like it is, but I'm not saying he's right or wrong. I'm just saying I feel like it's definitely a conflict of interest. Rob recused himself the next day, and then I, I had a different idea for the transfer because I, I knew this would come down in the future. Uh, my concern is just maintaining as um, much control over the property and on kind of a local level as we could, instead mm -hmm. of having people from other towns having control over our property here with that being a very valuable parcel. Um, and that's what prompted some of the initial conversations with Heidenberg um, and things like that about the school. But, but I think that John's idea is probably the best idea. And I have no background on it. I'm just looking at it saying like how you logical. make it a win-win for everyone. Sure. Sure. Yeah, I think that's, that's absolutely the most logical. It doesn't look like that much land, and it's sometimes it's hard to tell, but to give a right-of-way still still gives you, you know, full access to the rest of it without. I think the reason that, you know, one of the questions would be, yeah, I mean, it's figuring out if, if the right of way satisfies the right. desire for this, because with, with what we've been told for what, what's been brought to the board for the importance of this and the significance of it is not this additional building lot that's in here or, or this potential municipal building over there. It's just the road structure. Well, so I think that that would satisfy it. Yep. Wow. Well, let's see what they say. I like that. Yep. Anything else for the round table events? I think that's enough for me for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I have anything. John? Club? I got nothing. Oh, you do have something. Well, reading the minutes of May 17th, we, when we were talking about the speed sign in front of my house. The one that still doesn't work. The one that still doesn't work. Did Any yeah. ideas? On no, I, I need to follow up. I Because I don't even have a, a date for our new speed limit signs. And again, as I told you, we're going to try to do that. I yeah. thought they'd be in we by now. We should at least take it down and put it someplace that it will work. Yeah, exactly. So. You know, and that way another community can... Yeah, the, the, big, the big project on Crosstown is done and it's back open, so we'll, I'll get it in the schedule and we'll get that thing done. Yeah. Real quick one thing, yeah. yeah. now that we're on speed limits. Uh, Weston's co-op came to the board years ago. Year, a couple of years ago yep. asking about the reduced speed on uh, 12 down there. There was a survey. Whatever happened with that, is there? So the last that I knew, they were going to put uh, one of the machines there, too, to try to decrease the they, speed. They did put one this summer down near the, the 
farm. Yes. Somewhere on that stretch of road. They did, but and it was there. But it, it's the state that controls that speed limit. Not That's us. correct. That yeah. You're going to have to petition Fall your friends at the state mm -hmm. for that one, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. It's just I've got more and more kids from the fire heading over to that field, and it's starting mm -hmm. to really be a concern. It's a good point that he brings up. Could you follow up with Linda Thurston and just make sure that she's in agreement to our understanding, and if she has any questions or concerns or um, anything else she'd like us to address? Because I remember she was the one that came to the board. She should be out of town for another week or so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah, she's fairly responsive, so she'll get back to you when she's back in town. Okay. Any executives? Anything else? Any executives? Yeah. Motion to adjourn. Second. 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 <laughs> Discussion? Those in favor, say aye. 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 aye.